Context is everything. I'm going to play a beat I made that only uses recreations of synths from platinum records or songs with over 100 million listens on Spotify alone. Tell me if you recognize the songs that inspired these presets. Now let's play those same synthesizer presets in the context I found them. The one I think most people are going to get is the bass, and this is from Coilerae's Players. This has over 340 million listens on Spotify alone. Next up, the ARP is from Mac Miller's Ladders. That one has 261 million listens. Catronata's 10% inspired the pad, and that has 110 million listens. And then the deepest cut is uh, Jameer Kwai's Space Cowboy, which inspired the lead. Uh, Spotify that has 29 million listens, but the album it's from went platinum in the 90s. My point with this demonstration is don't be afraid to recycle. These presets sound unique simply because they're in a new context. There have been many examples of samples and presets being used in popular music. For example, Clint Eastwood by The Gorillaz isn't much different from the Rock One preset from the Suzuki Omnicord. That's it, that's the preset, it's the Rock One preset. <laughs> also consider that my demonstration was without adjusting any of the preset's parameters. What if we adjust some of the macros? As soon as I turn a macro, this sound is much more unique. If I turn several, there's probably no chance somebody's going to recognize this sound from its inspiration, especially in a completely new context. When synthesizers were new, it didn't take much to catch people's ear. One of the best-selling records of all time was Switched on Bach by Wendy Carlos, a recording of Bach played on a Moog synthesizer released in 1968 when most people didn't know what a synthesizer was. Switched on Bach was original because it checked two boxes. One, it used a new method of sound production, a Moog synthesizer. And two, it combined things in a unique way namely famous Baroque music and electronic music. The easiest way to make something original is to use a new method of producing that thing. For example, in the late 80s, the Yamaha DX7 was extremely popular and original because it made new sounds through a relatively new method of producing sound, FM synthesis. But not only that, it sounded very musical because the presets were very playable like a real instrument. So that too checks my two boxes for originality. A new method of production and a novel combination. In this case, the playability and behavior of an acoustic instrument combined with FM synthesis. Nowadays, there are so many tools available to us, creating a unique sound has never been easier. But being unique or original doesn't necessarily make something good. I could put a brand new recording of me sneezing, put it through Minimal Audio's Rift, Kilohertz Disperser, and Zynaptic's Pitch Map, randomize every parameter, and I'm pretty sure nothing like that will have ever been done before. But will it be useful, and will anyone want to hear it? Apart from me right now, probably not. In my experience and in my opinion, the sounds that are the most useful and popular are rarely that unique on their own. What makes a sound original most of the time, in my opinion, is when various sounds are combined in a new way to create something greater than the sum of its parts. Listen to The Weeknd and tell me you haven't heard all those synthesizer sounds a million times in the 80s. Or put on Dua Lipa and tell me you haven't heard all that before in music from the 70s. But this time it's Dua Lipa singing, this time it's with those chords and that melody and those disco tropes all combined with modern production techniques for a pretty original sound. So if we really only get original sound through a new method of creation or through novel combinations, when is a sound stolen? 
A while back, the famous producer Kashmir sold a sample pack that featured samples that were extremely similar to music from Mick Gordon's Doom soundtrack. Um, and I am, I, I'm, I am sorry about that. The reason I bring this up is because I'm considering making a video tutorial by request on how to make the lead from Mick Gordon's BFG division. And I'm giving this preset to my Patreon supporters. You may be thinking that I'm making the same mistake as Kashmir, but I think it's very different in a few important ways. First, I'm giving full credit to Mick Gordon for the inspiration of the preset. Kashmir was selling his samples as his own work. Many of Kashmir's samples recreated Gordon's recordings with the same notes, same tempo, and same timbre as Mick Gordon's recordings. That doesn't leave much room for interpretation for something new. By contrast, recreating an instrument heard in Mick Gordon's music simply provides somebody with the tool to create one similar timbre from the original recording. Now it's up to the musician or sound designer to create something new with that timbre. It's like the difference between selling a recreation of Marvin Gaye's Gotta Give It Up versus selling a recreation of the instruments used to play Gotta Give It Up. One will have the Marvin Gaye estate calling their lawyers. Well, both would probably get them calling their lawyers, so maybe that's a bad example. Now you may be wondering how I can then justify calling out another content creator for selling one of my presets on Gumroad. After all, isn't it just a tool that can be used in various ways? There are a few important things to consider. First of all, I'm selling that preset. I'm not selling a recording that features a sound that can be made with that preset. Now let's pretend somebody listens to the demos of my presets, makes their own presets inspired by how those presets sound, and sells those. That's perfectly fine, but that's not what this person did. They made an identical tutorial to mine following every step and used all the same values down to the exact decimal. They gave me some credit, but then they tried selling that preset as their own. I sent them a message explaining my case and they were really cool about it. They agreed to take the preset down and use an affiliate link for the original in its place. But I'm surprised they thought that was okay in the first place. It's important to note that no matter how good at sound design I get, I'm never going to make a preset that's exactly the same as the source of its inspiration. There will always be a degree of interpretation. When I sell a preset inspired by another sound, I sell my interpretation of the tool used to make the sound which will always be slightly different than the original tool and different from other interpretations of that tool as well. Whether that makes the tool sound original is up for debate, but in my opinion, the way that tool is used will have a much greater impact on how original it sounds in the end product. Anyways, I'm legitimately curious about what you guys think, so let me know in the comments. It can be a gray area. So what makes a sound original to you? And at what point is imitation theft? Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.